It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Welcome everyone to Hazelton Mayoral Debate. I'm Sam LaSant, your host. Tonight's debate is brought to you by the Greater Hazelton News and Information Partnership, the Standard Speaker, Local News 13, and SSP TV. I want to welcome the candidates tonight, Grace Cuzo, John Metashevsky, and Mayor Joe Yunuzzi. Uh, our panel consists of Mark Katcher, who is the city editor for the Standard Speaker, and Cristino D'Amato from News 13. The way we're going to do this, folks, we're going to have a two-minute opening from each of the candidates. Then we'll have a question to each of the candidates. They'll have two minutes to respond, and the opponents will have one minute to reply, and then we'll close with a two-minute um, uh, closing. Uh, so first, I'd like to start with uh, Grace Cuzo for her opening. Grace? Hi. Good evening, Sammy, John, and Joe. Kristen, I'm sorry, Krista, I'm sorry, dear. Mark, and the people of Hazleton, I'd like to talk to you about the many problems facing the city at this point in time. My number one concern is the crime, particularly the violent crimes we have been subjected to over the last few years. Our police force has become a reactive rather than a proactive one. We have one of the finest police forces in Pennsylvania. And now, with the correct leadership, they will show that to everyone once again. Drugs have been at the heart of much of our crime, whether it be murder, burglaries, home invasions, or muggings. Drug dealers and users will not be tolerated. No more waiting for the big bust. They will all be arrested. We will make Hazleton so uncomfortable for the drug dealers, they will leave Hazleton on their own. I saw a recent advertisement or a news report, excuse me, on this station, showing people how to carry their purse and be observant, which is true. But I was appalled when they went a little step further on it and telling us not to go out after dark unless we had to. This is something I won't stand for any longer. The condition of the city is another issue. I hear about repeatedly from the potholes and the dirty streets themselves. We receive approximately $500,000 from liquid fuels each year, and this, this should be going into our roads and their repairs. When I take office, you will see it being used just where that is, right in the roads. Make no mistake, our roads are a mess at this point, but they will be fixed. I stand by my statement. I will not move to sell the water authority. My reason is very simple. It is to keep our water shed safe. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. And now uh, John Metashevsky will have two minutes for his opening. Good evening, Hazelton residents. My name is John Metashevsky. I'm running for the mayor of Hazelton. I'm running on a lot of the conditions, the crime, the deplorable conditions of the playgrounds, the uh, mess of the playgrounds themselves, the streets, the violent crimes that I've witnessed myself personally, a 74-year-old neighbor a month ago got punched in the face. I couldn't get there to see her or do anything. When we finally talked to her, she refuses to testify on the grounds that she didn't belong on Alter Street. Has anybody been out there in those playgrounds? Dope bags, needles, booze bottles, kids 18, 20, 30 years old, you don't belong in these playgrounds. Other things, cleaning the streets up, prostitutes on, the, on Wyoming Street, drug dealers. I've witnessed myself by canvassing this when I was campaigning. Another thing I like to do is not only curb the crime within six months of my administration, I guarantee it will be changing this city. Another thing everybody's forgetting about is the youth of this city. That's the future, not us. This is what we're working on. I'd like to also that I did contact on the last election. I was told win the election, bring colleges into town, get things for these kids to do. Proposing a pool, skating rings, combination of whatever on this. Where are we at now? The police. Another thing with the police, to get more police on the streets, or my idea of saturate them is the overtime. Some of the overtime, put it into per diem police. Part-time status. Not with the full-time police department. No hopes and dreams of getting on a police department, but saturate these streets on key times. Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights. I've been witnessed myself riding around at nights not sleeping well. Uh, two, three, four, five in the morning, there's people prowling. I mean, we're talking from McKinley Street to Poplar Street to Garfield Street and the Alley Streets. Houses being robbed at nights. My own neighbors, my own family, copper taken out of the homes that were roughly for sale. Some of these homes don't have for sale signs on them. 
Drug dealing across the street, bags picked up constantly. I have to pick up booze bottles in the mornings. I, my neighborhood don't need it. I have no reason to put up with this stuff constantly. Thank you. Thank you, uh, John. Uh, Mayor Yunuzi. Thanks, Sam. Uh, thank you, Local 13, and uh, Sanders Speaker for hosting this uh, event. Now, I was born and raised in this city <clears throat> and have been in business 50 years. Yunuzi, Amy Oil, Job Johnny, Crossroads Computers, they're some of the uh, businesses that I have successfully uh, created and owned. Every one of them was located in Hazleton. I spent a large portion of my life in civic, social, and youth organizations, trying to make this a better place to live, work, and play. My wife was born here. My children were raised here. I love this town. That is why I want to lead the city to a better future. Hazelton is like a child to me. With all her faults, I still love her. I still strive to change her and help her recover. I am here representing Hazelton as its mayor <clears throat> to give this city the respect it deserves. Character, experience, and maturity are important qualities to be mayor. Character, being able to put yourself aside and do what is right for the majority not for your own individual wants and needs. Having respect for others, no matter what sex or race they are. Experience, a quality that is demanded in the office of mayor. The mayor's office requires that you make knowledgeable, precise decisions. Not a time for trial and error. Error is costly. Maturity, when you have both character and experience, you have maturity. Everyone knows the issues facing Hazleton, and it's a changing Hazleton. But not everyone knows the solutions. We have been working on the solutions to many of these issues. We saved $80,000 by bidding on insurance for, for the year 2010. For 2011, we bid it again and saved uh, 40000 By 2012, there will be a total savings of $120,000. OK, thanks. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you have an opportunity to pick up uh, later on the show. Okay, Mark Katchner from the Standard Speaker, our media partners, will have the first question that will be addressed to, to uh, Mayor Yunuzi. Thanks, Sam. Uh, I'm glad everyone could be here for a uh, discussion of the issues that are important to the city and its voters as well. Uh, at, at one point, it looked like that wouldn't happen. Uh, Mayor, you previously resisted a debate involving Ms. Cuso, citing her challenge to the city's $5.6 million borrowing plan, which you claim cost the city money. Why did you change your mind about that? Changed to come back into mm -hmm. this debate? Sure. Well, I'm the mayor. I represent the city, and I'm here to defend the city against their claims. That's why I'm here. Okay. Uh, any response? Oh, is that, was that the whole question? <laughs> that was the whole question. Oh, oh. All right. Anything else you want to say, Mayor? Anything no, else you want to say? That's okay. fine. Um, you can any response? Maybe I misunderstood your question. I simply asked about his, uh, his position on, on a debate involving uh, yourself. Right. Uh, he, he had said initially that he would not debate mm -hmm. because of your challenge to the city's borrowing plan. Go ahead, Joe. But what was the reason that's that not, you, sh you that's came? That's not correct. Not, not true? No, okay, can, can, not can you clarify? No. Uh, she asked me to debate, and I said no. That was it. And I did not, and I did not want to debate her okay. because of her claims. She responded in a paper, called me dumber than dumb and sick and old and whatever else. And I decided that I wasn't going to debate her. Okay. Then I gave a thought. And I figured I represent Hazleton and the people. And I'm here. Well, I'm glad you came. I really am. And people deserve to hear from all of us. And thank you. And I'm glad you reconsidered it, Joe. And I, I am very glad. Joe. Thank you very much. Uh, Whatever Mayor Yanuzzi's deal was, I respect that. I was open for a debate for everyone. Okay. I'm glad we're here. All right, Christina, your question will be to uh, Mr. Matashevsky. Okay. First, good evening to everybody. Um, John, you're, you're new to the political scene. So what separates you from the other candidates? And if elected, what's the first thing you would do differently? And specifically, how would you fix it? You know, and please give examples. 
Okay, yeah, I'm new to the political scene, but I've known the city over the years like I know the back of my hand. How would I do it? From the day I'm sworn in, first of all, get out on the streets with the police. It has to be done. You need a street mayor. Get out there constantly. See what's going on. Start laying pressure down. From the simplest things, this is where we start. People say they're going to get rid of drugs. You're not getting rid of drugs. You could curb it. You can move them. Start from the little boy up. Because basically, you're not going to get the big boy. You start slicing at the bottom and keep hitting up. Okay? Anything else, John? No. Joe, you have a reply to that? Repeat the question. <laughs> Well, Mayor, being you know in the seat that you are, um, what would you do differently um, if you were given you know another chance to continue your term? What I do differently? Mm -hmm. um, probably stay on the track I'm on. Uh, we're building up the police force. That's a great thing. We reverse the uh, city's financial situation. Uh, we're probably on a, an even track right now. A positive financial statement. So I think I would keep doing that on my downtown uh, investment. I, uh, I think that's our, our Humboldt, our Valmont Park, the Heights and downtown and Alder Street. They need to have companies come in with employment. If companies come in with employment, everything in that, that area will build up. You uh, are you done, Mayor? Sure. OK, uh, Kuzma. Well, most definitely, companies need to come in. But we need to show them that there's a reason to come into Hazleton. And until a lot of the issues involving crime and drugs definitely are addressed, they're not going to come in. Yes, downtown will look, the Broad Street, when it's finished, will look very nice. But there's nothing to invite anyone else down here for. You were on your own show telling people, hold your purse a certain way. You know, when you're walking with your cell phone, be careful. Well, we have got to change the image. Number one has got to be changed on the city. And when we're telling people, hey, you know what, you gotta, you got to watch where you're walking. Don't go out at night. Come. Who's going to come in on those issues? No one. This has got to change, and now has got to be the, now has got to be the time. Thank you, Grace. Uh, folks, you're watching the Hazelton Mayoral Debate uh, brought to you by our News Alliance with the Standard Speaker, Local News 13 and SSP TV. And uh, Mark Hatcher, who is the city editor this year, and Christina Amato. Uh, from News 13, along with Grace Cuzo, John Metasevsky, and Mayor Yanuzzi. We're going to take our first break. We'll be back right after this. Thanks for staying with us, folks. I'm Sam LaSant, and you're watching Hazel's and Mayoral Debate with uh, Grace Cuzo, John Metasevsky, and Mayor Yanuzzi. I uh, want to thank the Greater, uh, or Greater Hazelton News and Information Partnership, the Standard Speaker, for a lot more information on this debate. Turn to the Standard Speaker tomorrow, as you always turn to the Standard Speaker for information. Uh, Mark Katchner is here as the city editor, and Christina uh, D'Amato from Local News 13. And uh, Mark, you have a question for Grace Cuzo. Sure. Ms. Cuzo, it, it's well known that you've been a uh, regular at city council meetings for uh, many years. Aside from your, your role as a watchdog in, in the city of Hazleton, what else in, in your background do you, do you believe qualifies you to uh, run the city, which is the size of Hazleton? Well, I served on the water, or the water, sorry, excuse me, the housing authority. Mm -hmm. um, that's really all. I'm going to be really honest. That's all. But I have a great knowledge of what's going on. I understand this form of government. You know, they, the director of administration is truly supposed to be running the government. The mayor has its duties, and the buck always stops there. But the day-to-day -day business is truly handled by the city's administrator. You ha don't need to have a business background. You don't need any of these things, to be honest with you. And that government is set up that, that way, exactly. And I do understand third class city code, optional plans law, the one we're under, the, and you don't need it. And, and you're saying, uh, as, as mayor, you don't necessarily need to have the financial A business background. The, the financial background. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that being said, if I might just continue this. Go ahead. Um, you're, you're saying the director of administration would then be a very important position. That most certainly is. It's one of the most important positions. Do, do you have any any plans in mind for that position at this point, if you were to be elected? I have no plans on anyone anywhere. I will not even talk to anyone on things like that. I'm a very stickler, stickler on that, and it's funny. Won't do it. I will not talk to anyone on any of the department head director jobs. I will not, and I have not 
until the election's over. I don't want to talk to anyone on them. John, you have a response? Yeah. Mrs. Cuso, I do agree with what you said, but a lot of the things being the watchdog, from what I've experienced too, it's always never an answer, a suggestion, or even try to put a solution into it. I mean, a lot of us have actually. I've taken them on, they've known it. And uh, you're right. I, the, every, to hers, yes, I have looked at people, I've not talked to anybody. I'm a firm believer from the arts and how I got there in my life too is surround yourself with the best. And it'll prove itself out, pan itself out. Mayor Uh Well, I've been in business 50 years. I've been on council, and I thought I knew everything too, till I became mayor. You better know what those people are telling you. You better know about it. Uh, you have to be in a position where you've hired people, you've fired people, you've worked with numerous amount of people. Uh, in my business, I had a large amount of uh, employees. And that's what Hazelton has. Not only a large amount of employees, but different, uh, different styles. You have your police, you have your, uh, you know, your administration, all of that. And you better be on top of it, and especially in the finance end. You better know what's going on because I don't, I personally use everybody else to do the daily, but I direct what goes on. So I'm in charge as the mayor. I, the mayor is actually called the chief executive officer of the city and any corporation, that's the man that runs the show. And you better know what's going on. Thank you. Now, Christina, your remark will be to Mayor Yunuzi. Mayor, a new rental registration proposal was debated for months between officials from Hazleton and local landlords. The ordinance would have contained steeper rental property registration fees and an annual licensing fee. Why is this needed and how important is it to have something like this in place here in the city? It's very important. We have no access to these apartments. We can't get in those apartments unless there's a, um, a complaint. Otherwise, we cannot go in. With, <clears throat> with that ordinance, we can go in and we can protect the residents, and that's the whole idea. I mean, we go in the houses that there's no exits. We go in the houses that well, there's no uh, fire alarms, smoke alarms. There's nothing in these places, and they're filthy. But we can't get in there unless somebody complains. But with this uh, ordinance, we'll go in annually and inspect that property. And the money they're paying is to get the uh, code enforcement people out there, the inspectors, that they can go into these properties, not only to get uh, find violations if there are and correct them and make, the, make it a safer Hazleton, but we have to know Who's in those apartments? We don't know. There was a fire. They were running around the block trying to find out who's in that building. Is there kids in there? You didn't know. With the uh, inspection ordinance and the forms they fill out, we'll know if there's a family in there. We'll know if there's kids in there. Uh, I think it's probably the most important thing at this moment for the city of Hazleton to, uh, with the blight, to get rid of the blight and to save uh, keep the uh, public safe. Okay, um, uh, John, you want to reply to that? You have a yeah, minute? I do see the ordinances, and, uh, but there has to be some revamping. There is right, you've got to see who's in these properties. I've seen enough of them deplorable myself. But my idea of that is, too, to make it more simplified. I think you get a card, you go to City Hall, the person that's a renter goes to City Hall, goes in, pays his fees, gets a double little card. He tears it off, he goes to the landlord. He could go to any landlord in the city now. At the same time, we get these same people for the tax money per capita that I'll bet you half the city's not paying this per capita at this time. Now, like the mayor said, when you go into these buildings, you know who's in there. There is a fire. Okay, you go in there, they go to a dollar store, buy a dollar friend. The landlord has his ticket. There's four apartments in here. There should be four tickets telling you how many people are in these buildings. And as, as safety reasons, there it is for the fire department. To walk into these buildings, basically, I don't know where the constitutional rights are to bust in without a complaint. That's my only problem. Complaints, yeah, outside, is that a reason to go inside? I don't know. But I still say we have to simplify this and make it more productive. Thank you, uh, John. Uh, Grace? The ordinance right now as it sits is very dangerous. The city is going to wind up in court. We're going to be sued. They do not define who does the inspections where and it's not a good ordinance right now as it sits. The ordinance 
as far as I'm concerned, should be thrown out. We should get the ones we have on the books. They should be researched. And let's look and see what's not needed any longer, what's needed, and that has to be addressed. But right now, that one that's in City Hall right now is not going to benefit us at all. Thank you, Grace. Uh, now, Mark, your question to uh, John Medeshevsky. Yes, Mr. Medeshevsky, the, the standard speaker was recently received an email uh, from a 26-year-old native of Hazleton who said she may have to leave the city because of what it has become. And if, uh, if I may, I'm just going to briefly describe what, what she talks about in her, in her email. Uh, she complains about uh, the crime, the drugs, uh, the filth in the city. Um, she said in, in one week's time, um, she found two males breaking into her car at 3 a.m., uh, had trouble getting the police to show up. Um, she had to actually uh, confront these people herself um, until the police did show up. Uh, the next day, she was in her yard. Uh, she found a, a syringe filled with uh, what looked to be heroin as well as blood. Um, another day during this week, uh, she had to go to Pantry Quick to get some food or, or whatnot and was confronted at the entrance by a, a pit bull who was, or which was not on a leash. Uh, so she had certainly an interesting week. And uh, of, of course, as you can imagine, she's concerned for, for her well-being. Um, so if this person had come to you with these concerns and you were the mayor, how would you respond and, and what would you um, offer to do for, for this woman? At this point, the way the city is, there's nothing. I mean, but most of us in the city, were, we used to grow up into Mayberry. As most of you, I don't know if you do realize this, I'm in the heart of this. I'm on 7th and Alter Street. I've heard this quite a bit. For the children, a lot of these kids, there's nothing for them to do. I mean, that's what I said earlier in this. We've got to focus on the youth, get things going. That's where it starts because they're the backbone of the city. I mean, there's a lot of kids out there with absolutely nothing to do. I live in a neighborhood. There's a lot of kids in my neighborhood. And I ran around when I was a little kid. I stayed out to whenever I wanted. Now it's not even dark. They're batting down the hatches. To tell this woman that it's just a community effort. Not one person is going to do this as an elected mayor. You need the right people with you to work on this. This is where I said we got to revamp things with the pools, playgrounds, get cultural centers going, the colleges, turn the city completely around. I mean, it can't keep running the way it's been running. I mean, old Hazelton's gone. We got to go into something new. We got new people here. It just got to change. It's got to completely change from where it's sitting at. Uh, like you said, I heard Rob. I had my own instances where pit bulls came on my property, attacked my dogs. I've been already confronted. My home's been broken into almost three times now. Our business is down now because of robberies and things going on. Alter Street's a total mess. To tell this girl, I sympathize with her because I know what's going on. I hear a lot of neighbors complaining. Noise, 2, 3 in the morning. The cops don't lay paper. I mean, lay the paper. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. I've heard in my neighborhood gunshots four times already going off. Get up, they're using revolvers. There's nobody can find anybody. You can't blame the police. We've got an excellent police department. But on this girl's part, we could change and we all do it together. Other than that, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, because of the nature of the question, I'm going to extend this to two minutes for a reply if you want up to two minutes, okay? Because I think there's a, a, maybe no, some, more to be said. So, Grace, you could re re respond to that. With On that young girl's problems, I, I truly understand, because I've heard that. That's, I swear it's the girl I talked to. Um, we need to address what's going on. People are coming in, and they're, they're coming up, walking up to you and, and literally accosting you. And... You, Joe, you did hire four police. I agree. Unfortunately, those four are still in school. They won't be done and on the streets till January. This is a problem. We're not at 40 policemen. Two gentlemen retired this year, and Mr. Dixon will be leaving in December, I'm assuming, to take office in January. We are not at 40 police. We need them on the streets now. This has to happen now. There's no more playing games. We can't hire them six months ago and wait till they're done with school. They need to be out. Try. I know about calling the police. They don't come. They do not. And it just they just seem like there's too much going on. They cannot go everywhere. I understand that. But, yeah, we do need more police. And that has to be addressed. And I would suggest whoever wins, they look at some of the overtime. When I looked at the overtime, I believe there's enough there for two police overtime in overtime. There's policemen going making $85,000 last year in overtime. And at that point, with that money, you have another two police officers. So if you hire 40 with your four in school, 
you know, I guess you're still going to be off, though, when Mr. Dixon leaves. But we're still going to be off on that point. But there's two police just on the overtime. And there is money out there. And I don't think we're seeking enough through our grants. You realize we are 18 miles from the nuclear plant. There, we have not sought grants that are available. And I don't understand why. I'm not blaming anyone on this one. I, I don't know what's going on and why we don't have a little more. Uh, maybe we should hire a grant writer and base his salary on what he gets. We did that in the Housing Authority. Thank you, Grace. Mayor? Uh, first, let me say there is nobody in the police department made $80,000 in overtime. That was a statement. It's, uh, it's not true. Uh, second, I don't know if, uh, did you uh, investigate that email and is there a, re a report at the police station? Because if there is, I'll check it out. Mm -hmm. Is that true? I, no, I, I don't know. I, well, I can pass let me, it along to right. you. Our, our police numbers are more than 40 right now. Uh, we're saying there's 40 because of the, the uh, four that are still in school. Matter of fact, we hired another one. We're on a process right now of hiring another police officer. So the numbers are there. The police in our town are working really, really hard, but they're a little bit disorganized in the sense of structure. And right now, that's because of the retirements and the, you know, throughout the years. Right now, I'm reorganizing the police station. I went 911. 911 is a, uh, uh, freeing up an officer and also allowing the police to respond quicker. They're out there. They get a, they get a message right off the bat. It, it's, um, it's working. They like it. I like it. There you're going to see a change in the city. You're going to see a big change in the city once that happens. Now, when these four guys come out, they have to go to school. We can't hire them without Act 120. They've got to be trained. And it is till December. And they'll be on the force in December. But one only retired. So we have still that other officer. He's still on uh, patrol. Uh, we have other officers um, that are coming on to the police force now. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Um, before we go to break, once again, this mayoral debate has been brought to you, is being brought to you by the standard speaker, our media partners, and the local News 13. An editorial note from me to the policemen in the greater Hazleton area, you're doing a fabulous job from what you have to deal with. That's my editorial, and I think the three of you would agree that I would not want to be a policeman today, but those people who are protecting the city and all uh, policemen throughout this, uh, this uh, area are doing a fabulous job, state policemen included. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Hazelton Mayoral Debate, brought to you by the Greater Hazelton News and Information Partnership, Standard Speaker, SSPTV, Local News 13. Make sure, folks, you pick up the Standard Speaker tomorrow. Uh, our guest panel, Mark Catcher, who is the um, a city editor for the Standard Speaker, and Christina D'Amato, one of our reporters here at Local News 13. Uh, we have Grace Cuzo, uh, John Metashevsky, and Mayor Yanuzi here at the panel. I want to thank the three of them for being here today. Okay, Christina, your question now to uh, Grace Cuzo. Okay. Grace, um, back in June, the city of Hazleton planned to borrow $5.6 million to pay off its debt, but you, along with another city resident, filed a complaint against it through the Department of Community and Economic Development. The complaints were dismissed but cost the city thousands of dollars. So why did you file the complaint in the first place, and was it worth the city losing more money in legal fees, and what would you do differently to solve the problem? Number one. I would do it again tomorrow. Number two, do you have any proof of what the costs were? I have that in writing for that request. If you get that, please send me a copy of it because I don't know what it cost. And number three, I followed DCED's procedure. If I had done anything different, that would have been wrong. I followed their procedure. And I'm very happy with what happened because they are overseeing the 2.6 million and this is according to Ms. Leib. They are making sure that that was the money. The money is being spent for exactly what it was supposedly borrowed for. And the $3 million that they borrowed in addition to the 2.6 was to pay this year's TRAN note off. Now, I'm going to ask everyone here, why hasn't the budget been amended to reflect that $3 million the TRAN note borrowed in January? No one bothered to do that. There's a $3 million somewhere floating around, 
and no one has asked where it's at. That's the big question. And I would not do anything different. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, your response? Uh, Grace uh, complained to the DCED. She filed a complaint to satisfy herself. She didn't understand it, and they, she, had to file, she had to file a lawsuit. We had to have attorneys respond with briefs, answering it. And once they saw the briefs, they totally dismissed it. DCED is not overlooking the, the note. Uh, the bank is overlooking the note that, that lent us the money where it's being spent. That's why we brought in uh, the Pennsylvania Economy League. We brought them in so they would look over it too. But we are getting approval on everything we're spending. Uh, and they have to be spent on old bills and not this year's bills. The three million dollars she's talking about, that three million dollars was borrowed throughout the years and every year was paid out at the end of the year. Every year it went around and as the economy fell and the expenses went up, we went in the hole. So they did not pay it all off. And then they would borrow it again, pay off what it was and have it start all over again. And every year they did that, but every year they went in the hole. This year we borrowed the money and paid the note off and we're done. Thank you. Um, Mr. Matuszewski. No comment on this one. No comment, okay. Uh, Mark, your question to Mayor Yanuzzi. I almost want to follow up on, on that, but I, I, I'll, I'll move along for now and we'll, we'll ask a different question. Uh, Mayor, you supported a building design ordinance that makes recommendations such as uh, what color business owners should paint their facade and also what types of trees and, and flowers should be planted out front. Uh, critics ha have said that there uh, are more important problems facing uh, the city, and I think we uh, talked about some of uh, those tonight. Uh, w would you ag agree with that, with that statement? Uh, no, it's not true. We don't tell them what to paint. We, we no, recommend. I, I said, I said, we make, recommend, I said make recommendations. Make recommendations right. on what to paint. Right. That's what we, that's what we tell them. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you think that there's more important things to do? You think that we only concentrate on the more important things? We concentrate on them all. If that's a good idea, we do it. And that's what it is. It is a good idea because it standardizes some of the things. It gives a wide variety of the things you can do. And we would like to see, once uh, the uh, Broad Street Corridor is done, once that's done, that it maintains its beauty. We don't want the wrong things downtown. Now, most of them are suggestions, and most of the people that are seeing this are now saying, oh, see, they have a choice. It wasn't that everybody had to paint it blue, or you can't paint it, you know? No. You get to pick the colors, keep it in a certain theme, and, and make downtown look beautiful. Yes, I think that was very important. It was done over years and years, because we spent as little as time as we could, and it took like three years to do that, to uh, the overlay. And I think it's an important part of the city, just like everything else is. We're, we're working on crime, we're working on uh, blighted properties, we're doing all of that, but we're doing the, the little things too. Uh, yeah, one minute to reply, uh, Mr. Matuszewski. Uh, yes, I do agree, there's a lot more important issues, but this time I've got to agree with Mayor Yanuzzi, you gotta keep a theme, because I mean, downtown over years right now, as we see, it's a dump. I've done a lot of travel and I still do, and you go to some of these towns, it's quaint, everything looks the same. I mean, you can't have somebody with a brick front and then come in and throw plaster on it. I mean, when you come down the street, I mean, it is the first interpretation of Hazel when you see this town is coming down this street. Most people actually come down broad. You know, and then you look at it now, it's a dump, but you give it something, give it some character, and then they say, look, maybe look here, look there. I also think that's my idea of attracting businesses down here. You got to have something to attract the businesses, not just uh, a few trees with lights on them. I mean... It, I think there's a lot of potential on the street. It's never going to be downtown as it was, but there's other issues with the stores, and that would come down a little bit later maybe. Thank you. Gracie, you have one minute to reply. Joe, I agree with you. We do need to keep downtown uniform. We always had the Shade Tree Commission, and they did keep the, shade, the trees and the shrubs. And, yeah, we, do, we don't want it to look orange and green and everything else under the sun and I have no problem with that and there are a lot of variations that people can go with it. Okay, uh, Christina, your question to John Matuszewski. 
John, it's no secret that Hazleton is having money, trob money troubles. How would you balance the books when it comes to saving and spending? And what do you think of the PA Economy League's early intervention program? Do you think that was a good idea? I guess it's working for Joe. Myself, personally, I don't, I can't say agree or disagree because you need some kind of help. The city itself, like Ms. Cuso said, to hire two cops at that price, my idea to save the money at city money at this time would be, this is where I came into it earlier, per diem of police. I might be able to hire laid off police departments that already have their acts, put these Hazel City uniforms on. I might be able to get 10, 12 policemen on the streets at key times of the week instead of paying these two extra cops, which average, I'm not sure, is somewhere around 70 some thousand with benefits. And I maybe disagree, Ms. Cuso, but also, I did some heavy investigating. Mascaro's taking some heavy money out of the city. I looked about buying brand new garbage trucks. Having people work in them, our own people, they, their wages are gonna be low necessarily, or naturally. But also, I did investigating on these trucks. I'm overshooting this, I did it also with the companies and garbage collectors. A quarter million a piece for the garbage trucks, you're looking at $110,000 for recycling. We take our own dump it. Here's revenue coming back to the city. Another thing that's been an infraction over the city over the years where Hazelton has lost millions of dollars of people scrapping, if you go out there and look at it. Go up to scrapyard every day, hundreds, thousands of dollars. This is picked up on the streets of Hazelton. This should be revenue coming in. If it comes down to the point you get a steak body, you pay a couple guys minimum wage and let them carry their own weight and pull this stuff in. And if nobody believes me, go out at nights, nights Wednesday night, go into the Laurel to Locust Street area and see how many people are out with pickup trucks. Thank you. You're welcome, Grace, your reply. The money problems the city is in, unfortunately, has gone over a period of years. We've allowed bills to accumulate, and when the budgets were approved the next year, no one bothered to include the last year's debt. <laughs> and we ended up with reportedly $2.6 million. I don't know the final figure. I can't answer that. And that's where a problem lied. If there was a debt, it should have been carried over. Joe, you sat on council. Did you question it? Why you, were, why you were carrying this debt, and there was nowhere in the budget that you were noting it anywhere. Well, we had the debt building up, and then we were at 2.6 million, reportedly. I don't know. But this is a sad part, and we've got to live within our means. Do I think we can bring money in? I've looked at uh, a tipping fee for the mine lands, and we just the first contract alone, we lost $2.5 million at $5 a ton, okay? The first contract with, that they had out here with their dumping. I also hear they're bringing in soil from a Superfund site. If anyone knows, please let me know. I, I don't know. I, I have no idea. But that really scares me. Thank you, Grace. Mayor, your response? Uh, prior to this, Grace said she doesn't need financial experience, and it shows. She does not have it right now because... If she knew what that 2.6 million was, it is debt. It is owed. Every year it was added to the bottom of the statement. Every year it showed up. It was uh, 1.2, 1, 1 and then in 2009, we lost in one year $1,433,279. That made the 2.6. That's the debt. That's what we borrowed. They were uh, money owed to other uh, contractors. So we went out and we, we borrowed. But I'm going to tell you this. In 2009, the end of 2009, we made a budget and we made a, a statement uh, that we raised the taxes. I have to say that. If you remember, we did. And we made some changes. Now, 2010 audit is coming in. Now, 2000, we lost 1,004,300. 2010. We're almost even. So Hazleton is not in financial trouble. The estimate for 2011 is going to be balanced, if not in the black. Hazleton is not in trouble. Thank you. We made the adjustments to correct that. Thank you. Uh, Mark, your question to uh, Grace. Yes. I am going to come back to the, to the, to the financial issue because I, I, I know it is an important one. Um, Grace, I would like to ask um, about your challenge to the, uh, to the borrowing plan. Um, did you have an alternate plan that you... Yes, I did. I presented okay. to them. I requested they deny the three million because that was the TRAN note. Mm -hmm. TRAN note, as you know, is usually borrowed and it is paid 
from like it, it's filed and paid the end of the year, you know, which would have been December 31st this year. For some reason, we didn't. They borrowed to pay for it in that 5.6. And the two point, and I, that's the only thing I asked for. Believe it or not, that's all I asked for. And verification of the 2.6 million. I never said, you know, oh no, they can't have it. That's not what I ever said. I asked for verification of the billing. And I, even Monday only got 400,000 in bills. I have letters and asking for them, I'm still waiting. And that is what I asked for. I never said don't do it. But my next question is, now think about this. Has PEL reviewed anything that's going on right now in any of the borrowing? If, is PEL overseeing, which I hope they are, and w with our budget, our audit isn't even out from last year, so I don't know what any figures are from last year, so I can't answer that question on where we stand last year. I really can't. And it's not out. It's November, and our budget, our audit's not out from last year yet. Our budget's due yesterday. Will, will it be out at the next meeting, I guess, I hope. And Joe, every, unless the uh, budgets that were given to me, they, they never included the previous year's debt. And I have them at home. And I'll be happy to give them to each of you, any one of you. Okay. And you said at the first part of your statement that you did have a plan. Can, can you just briefly describe All that? All I wanted was the not give the $3 million. I wanted the $3 million to be carry, to be paid as a trend note. And then the two, see, it would have it cut our debt. We, were, we have approximately $9 million originally outstanding, and now you added 5.6. So we've just increased our, almost, we almost doubled our debt. And we couldn't borrow. The Redevelopment Authority had to borrow because the city could only get it borrowed for 10, or 10 years. The Redevelopment borrowed for 15. And the payments are, are very high. The interest rate on the borrowing is very high. Thank you. Uh, John, would you like to respond to that? Uh, yeah, a lot of this on the budget and all, we all have numbers thrown around. And myself personally, and Mrs. Kuz, I don't think we know exactly. The only person really knows is it's Mr. Yanuzzi himself. And to really get that in there, you get, re you get elected, you get in there, you go through the books, have the audit done, and disclose the numbers. Because right now, for me to start throwing numbers around here, it's hearsay. Done. Mayor? Every year since I've been there, Grace, and D are the first ones in the office for the audit when it's approved. They have copy after copy, year after year. If they would read it, it would show the 2.6 million that we're in a hole. And I just gave you the numbers there, 2008 and 2009, which totals 2.8. These specific bills are not there. But they lent us the money on the 2.6, and now the bills are being paid at that 2.6, which is, if it doesn't need 2.6, it won't have 2.6. But they're reviewing the budgets that they're past bills. We're paying bills that we did not pay previous years. We're not paying this year's bills. But that $3 million that we borrowed you borrow that because you don't have any money. It's tax anticipation. You're anticipating tax coming in in April, May, June, July. So you borrow that money so you can run the, the, the city. You shouldn't need $3 million, but through the years, they kept borrowing more and carrying it. When you get to the end of the year and you don't have any money, just for instance, uh, 2008, they went 1.2 in a hole. They were, that came out of that, Three million. Then it went around, and we lost 1.4. That came out of that three million. It, it was three million dollar uh, 2.6 that we didn't have to pay back that three million. So she says, pay it out of that. Where are you going to get it? It's not there. So we borrowed the money to pay it off, and we borrowed the money to pay the back debts. Thanks, Mayor. Um, because of the nature of the question, uh, extending a little bit of time, you know, do you want to? come back with something before I go to break? No, that, oh, that, that's okay. fine. All right. Fol okay. Folks, we're watching the Hazel Mayoral debate. <clears throat> it's brought to you by the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, our news alliance with the standard speaker. Uh, Mark Catcher, who's the city editor, is here, and Christina D'Amato from News 13. Uh, first, I want to thank Service Electric Cable Vision because none of our programs would be on if it wasn't for our local cable system. We'll be back right after this. 
Thanks for staying with us, folks. It's a Hazel DeMayoral debate, and uh, now we're going to have um, Christina. Your question will be to uh, Mayor Yanuzzi. One minute. Okay. Mayor, um, if the city's financial problems continue and a decision must be made to either raise property taxes or sell water department <coughs> assets, what path would you choose? Well, I just said that uh, we're in a balanced budget now, so we wouldn't need to cut. We went after uh, the services, give the service to the people, how are we going to get the money? So we did raise the taxes, and we're in a good position right now. But in the future, as things increase, we'll have a problem. If you're talking about selling the water company, that's, that's done with. Uh, we were in favor of selling it for very good reasons, uh, but it didn't happen. They came in with a, uh, an agreement they wanted to do with us, and we went with it. They helped us out. Uh, I still believe it weakened them by giving us the money, and it made us a weak company a little bit better, so I think we're like this. And that day might come again where the water company has to be discussed. But right now, it's not being discussed. And right now, the city of Hazleton is in good shape financially. Mr. Medeshevsky, one minute. Question again. Um, if the city's financial problems continue or arise again um, and a decision must be made to either raise property taxes or sell water department assets, which one would you choose? What path? Well, if elected at this point, I don't, the water authority's out and I have other plans not to raise taxes because what I believe is and from what I've been studying is we've got to find a way to lower taxes to get more funding because the higher taxes we have, the less funding we get. And I'm looking at, that's why I said revenue between the pools and the skating rings and bringing things in. Tax a lot of properties out there right now that aren't being taxed. And this isn't the point in time, we don't have enough time to get into it. But there's many properties out there being taxed, especially with the churches. There's a lot of them going now with their halls and all that are being rented. I mean, they're making money on them. The Hazelton School District's renting St. Joe's up there now from what I understand. I mean, this should be on a tax base now, not... Uh, Tax-free is a lot, a lot of parking lots, a lot of empty lands. Look at St. Joe's Hospital up there. What are we getting out of this? It's falling apart. Grace? Uh, no, I would not sell the water authority. And like I said, I was looking at a fee per ton for what is being dumped on the mine lands. And I have another question. Anybody check out and see if the mine lands is on the property taxes? Good point. 276 acres. Is it on the property taxes? No, it's owned by the Redevelopment it's owned Authority. By this, the Redevelopment Authority, which is a portion of the city, which is not taxable. But its use is, ta is taxable. And I will cite no, the, no, when no. the Industrial Division owned the Northeastern Bank building, that was on the tax rolls. And I will cite that as an example. Okay. We have two minutes to close. Uh, and Grace, we'll start with you. I'd like to thank you, Sammy. You're welcome. Christina, Mark, and the viewers. I promise to serve the residents of Hazleton and put a stop to crime and drugs. We will stop it. I will work to fix our streets properly, equip our police with up-to-date equipment. I also promise to have our police on the streets, not three weeks before election. We will remove the drug element from Hazleton. We will make it that they want to leave town. Drug busts will become an everyday event rather than waiting for the big bust. The city's finances will be carefully scrutinized. I will seek all grants the city qualifies for. Further investigation needs to be done on green energy projects. Is our airport utilized to its fullest extent? Is there a way to extend its services and benefits to the city? Director's salaries will be evaluated and adjusted. This year has given us a number of arsons. We need to explore what and who is causing them. I feel with new leadership and concerned direction, we can turn around our city. With the experienced employees of Hazleton, we will tell the criminals, drug dealers, and property owners who abandon their properties, we are fed up and we will not put up with it any longer. I have an ad a friend of mine has on his truck. It says, drug dealers beware, ALPR is coming. ALPR, for anyone who wants to know what I've been asked, is an automatic license plate reader. Right now, the state only get, gives a little bit of information. Federal government gives more. It will be able to 
the officer will be able to drive right on doing his duty. It reads approximately 1,800 plates a minute. If that plate is listed to a wanted felon, if that plate has federal charges on it through the owner, it will give the officer time to know what's going on. Then a plan can be made by that officer. Thank you, Grace. Mr. Matashevsky. Thank you, Sammy. Uh, Mayor, Ms. Cuso. Yeah, I'd like to say, if elected, my promise is to the people, most people do believe me, I'm a man of my word. I will get on the streets with these police. We need things done. You need presence. The mayor himself has to be out there. I don't see anybody out there but the police. I do have a scanner. I see how the police are working. They're working their little butts off. I mean, it's not funny. Some of these calls, sometimes I hear 20 calls in an hour. Go down, clean Wyoming Street up. I think there's a lot more to be done in this town than hookers, drug dealers, and gang members. Lay the pressure down. That's what you got to start, like I said, small. There's no way people saying you're going to get rid of crime and drugs. You're going to curb it is all you're going to do. we got to get them out of here, move them. That I've confronted too many people. As a matter of fact, I could say something just happened to me two weeks ago. I'm out with my dogs. Two guys across the street don't belong there. Looks at me. I say something to them. They're dealing. And the, words, the first words out of his mouth, Metaschewski, I know who you are, what you're all about, and I'll keep doing this until they swear you in, if they swear you in. People are brazen. Same thing like the pools. This, they said if, cultural center, the skating rings, get things going. I mean, just alone the skating rings, if this all comes about, if I get in there, something's going to happen. Hazel High School automatically could have a hockey team. Ironically, a gentleman came down from Mountaintop, heard the rumor. The uh, Crestwood Comets got to go to the ice box in West Pittston to practice. This could be another lease. This is gen generating revenue. Get these people together as a community. I mean, everybody's at everybody's heads. But from what I've seen out there, I don't look at color, race, creed, whatever, but I mean, it seems like everybody has the most interest. We just got to get this scum off the streets. That includes our own people and everybody else. I mean, for these little kids to look up and glamorize the guy with a rainbow baseball cap and a Cadillac Escalade with uh, $10,000 of wheels on it isn't life. This is a short-lived life. And I see a lot of these kids. I mean, you got to start getting out there. Just get them off the streets. Pressure, pressure, pressure. And that's my idea of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manashevsky. Mayor Yanuzzi. Uh, thanks, Sam, Christina, Mark. Thank, thank you so much. Um, you need experience to run the city of Hazleton. You can't be a novice. You can't go into, into City Hall and, and not know what you're doing. You have to know what you're doing. I think I'm the person for that job. I've had plans in place right now to change our community. Uh, we're bringing in and buying a wind-generated electricity. We're starting to buy that. Uh, we are changing lights to LEDs. The Brushy Quarter will have new lights. These are all energy and cost-saving projects. We are implementing new apartment inspections. That's for the safety of the uh, residents and the health. Of course, a number of these issues, our number one issue is crime. It is hard to believe, but crime has decreased in the last three years due to the good work of our police. It has not decreased through uh, enough for our satisfaction. To combat this crime, we have to hire, and we did, six more police officers, officers right at this moment. We installed 33 surveillance cameras throughout the city, no cost to the taxpayers. We have completed a conversion to 911, freed up an officer for patrol, moving the police downtown. That's going to be a change, a good change for the uh, people of Hazleton to get that feeling of safety again. I am now in the process of, and it's going to be a, a major project, downtown Hazleton. This is where my concentration is right now. And I think once this happens, downtown Hazleton will completely do a turnaround. And that's what we're looking for. And that's what will make us a better city. And I want to thank everybody for watching this program. Thank you. OK, well, Mayor, thank you. Mr. Manischewski, thank you. Uh, Ms. Kuzi, uh, Grace, thank you very much. And as usual, Mark, thanks for coming from the standard speaker. Christina, thank you very much. Folks, we hope you learned something. Remember, it's very important for you to vote uh, on November 8th. Uh, look at the candidates, see their credentials, and make the right decision. We'll see you next time.